Hey, hey, folks, big announcement live Tuesdays at New York Comedy Club on 78th Street. Going to be a hot show. We'll get some guests in there. That puppy's going to sell. Yeah, brand new New York Comedy Club, formerly Stand Up New York. It's bigger. It's better. It's not bigger. It's the same size, I believe. I haven't seen it. I can't wait to see it. We'll see you there Tuesday, August 13th. Get those tickets fast. It's a small room. And that's where the podcast started, by the way. Oh, yeah. In that room, the original room. Good point. We're coming home, baby. Yeah. So uh, get those tickets now. Snatch them up before it's too late. <laughs> hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Yeah, no, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. I guess we're starting. Here it is, folks. We're back. We're early. We're queefing. We're quaffing. How the hell are you, Fanny? I'm okay. I just came straight from the old dermatologist. Oh, where, do you, where do you hear this new? Well, first of all, hottest Wait. woman on the planet, so I hope my warts never die. Wait a minute. You got a hot dentist, a hot derm, and a hot dead. Well, the derm's been hot forever. Okay. That's, that's what I've been telling you about. But I do have a hot dentist now, but she's always masked. The dentist's got to wear the mask. Ah, so she's got hot eyeballs. Okay. And a, and, a, and a delicate touch and everything. So I think she's hot, but a lot can be, and this is coming That's from true. me, of course, a lot can be said of the nose and mouth. She could have fucking list teeth. Yeah, yeah. No chin, list teeth, big forehead. Who knows? Well, the forehead is primo. The eyeballs are delicate and lovely. But that mask, I've, I've had it happen where I'm like, this woman's hot, and they pull that mask down and... Oh, Yikes! I've seen it. Yeah, there was a gal in a uh, AC. I was working with Doug, and she uh, she was running the show, and she was it was pre peak COVID, hot lady, great boobs, the whole thing, and she took that mask off, and it was dog face. Yeah, that's the trouble. Woof. Um, but uh, my dermatologist is the hottest woman on the planet, as as you know. But I went there today to get more blasties. These things they last, they linger. Uh huh. And it's deep. It's like a fucking shark tooth. It's it's six inches deep, and you cut it off, and it just comes right back. Wow. What is that? Is it calcium? What is that building up? It's not calcium. It's a wart. It's, uh -huh. uh, it's HPV. H to the Oh, pivot. really? It's all H. Pavilloma vagina. It's connected. It's a lot of leg to dick. That's a lot of coverage. Well, I think it's a different PV. There's like 300 HPVs. Ah. Uh -huh. There's the cancer HPV. There's the dick HPV. There's the lip HPV. And evidently there's the foot HPV. Yeah. Which is a deep HPV. You ever had the uh, cold sore on the lip? I've never had that ever. Me neither. No. I got Knock on wood. herpes on my dicks, but not. Uh, I have multiple dicks. But this foot, so I go there today to <laughs> get it, you do it extra blasted and new wart spread uh, to the toe. Uh, new I'm wart. trying to subtract warts and she's adding warts. So Damn I got it. triple chirogenic fucking. T -t 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 -t. I'm all, I'm bleeding everywhere. Ah, uh, Wharton University. It's horrible. <laughs> Damn it. That sucks. Now you got a whole new thing, but she's probably like, yes, cha-ching, I'm back in business. We got a newbie. Well, cha-ching is her assistant, so she did say that. <laughs> but, um, oh, hello. Yeah, she did, um, I think she's happy to have me back, but I'm, I'm happy to see her because it's a hot woman I get to talk sure, to once sure. a month, so that's fun. I don't get to talk to a lot of hot women other than my uh, wife and my side pieces. Well, she could have a mustache, if we're being honest. If you haven't seen that, no mask. She could have full on... Uh, she could have a wart on her chin. No, the dentist oh, is the mask. Oh, I see, The derm I see. is... The beauty. I keep God, telling you. I've been God. telling you for years to go to this derm. you got to sure. go to a derm. you got all kinds of spots. And oh, things. I got spots. I got molds. I got blemishes. I got nicks. And I got zits. Yeah, I don't know what the hell that thing is oh, over there. What, all where? kinds of spots. Well, you got this fucking thing. There's that. There's oh, this. Yeah, that's a beauty mark. I don't know what any of that Which is. Which is the all-time euphemism, by the way. you what? got a big old brown pizza mole on your face. And you go, it's a beauty mark. You're a beauty mark. Oh. 
Ah. Beauty Mark Norman. I'll take it. I like, uh, we got cats on the ones and twos here. Chuck is, I think, finally took his own life. Cats is a big, smiley retail. He looks like he's got autism or something. He's staring down, chuckling and smiling. Real baby Huey over there. He's going to pet an animal too hard. And uh, Chuck jumped off the uh, Staten Island Ferry, I heard. Oh, my God. And, uh, And then he died, and cats fished his body out and ate it. Yeah, <laughs> look like it. Uh, thanks for the cookie. Cass brought two cookies. One for you, one for... Is it a good cookie? Great cookie. It's fatter than Chuck. Wow, look at that. It's a good time. Speaking it, of fatter it, than Chuck, we're happy to have you, Jason. Uh... I got a lot to I got a lot to throw at you here. I can't wait. Well, first of all, I saw Long Legs at the Alamo Draft. Yeah. Where's the Alamo Draft? That's downtown? Downtown, right on uh, Liberty. That's where I'll be, folks. I'm moving there. Lock, stock, and barrel. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. Liberty. Yeah, by the way, you're long legs. Look at those gams. Jesus, that's a stilt. Wow, Wilt the stilt. Nice thigh. Thank you. Uh, So uh, go downtown. And first of all, you ever been to one of these? You get the the meal, you get a couple of beers, you get a cocktail, a tea, a dessert. I went to one draft house, saw the worst movie of all time, and uh, I didn't really get it. I don't li- I don't get the draft house appeal, honestly. What did you see? Fourth of July down there? What happened? No, I saw the, the, the Cohen brother new movie with his wife, and it's the biggest piece of shit ever. I like the Cohen. No, 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 no. This is, you didn't like this movie. Really? This is the one he just, the, they broke up. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, They were fucking? The solo, and he made it with his bisexual lesbian wife, oh, and it's called I'm out. Something, and it's the worst movie I ever saw in my life. But I don't get the appeal of the draft house. I mean, I don't drink, I guess, but sure. I, want, I want dinner and then a movie. Right. The last thing I want is a waitress walking up. Excuse me. Would you like another beer? I'm like, That's I'm part watching of the it. fucking film. Well, they've kind of perfected it where you f- you write it on a on a note and then you push the button and it lights up so they go ding in the kitchen and they come out and you just hand them the note so it's a little less uh, interaction. But it's still distracting. Of course, I'm still looking for. Oh, there she is. Here's the note. Thank yes. you. Like, yes. Where's the food? When's the food getting here? Now I'm eating a steak and trying to watch a film. Right, and, and it's a horror movie too. So you're in it, and then you know Nick Cage is like. Nah! I put it in my ass, and you're like, "Oh, there's the guy. I'll take an iced tea." Right. You know, but uh, the problem is too, it's dark as shit. It's a movie theater, so uh, I'm I'm eating a, a hamburger, and I'm like, "Is that a mushroom or a condom? What is that I'm eating here?" And you don't know what's going on. Condemnation. Hey, is that, that a right. condom place? Huh? That's a good name for a condom place. Hey, that is good. Condemnation, and it's like all devilly. I like ah! it. That's great. Like long legs. Hell yeah. I didn't get long legs. I didn't like long legs. I don't get it. It's stupid. Nah, I like short legs. Give me Brad Williams. Uh, <laughs> those are the shortest legs. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I didn't get it. Ooh, I hate the devil. The devil sucks. The scene at the bus stop? That was a, supposed to be a joke. What was the bus Remember stop? Remember he's at a bus stop with the luggage, and the cops roll up, and he's like, Oh yeah, yeah. I was like, "This is uh, this is a parody." It was Goof Troop. I didn't care for it, and uh, I've spent like three <laughs> days on Reddit finding people that also hated it. Yeah, okay, um, good. But um, yeah, that's so. It's in the financial district. Then? Oh, it's downtown, right at the tip, right on the uh, herpy of the um, island of Manhattan. This is gonna be the closest we ever lived together. I can't wait. To each other. Bring it on. We'll build a treehouse. What's the closest we've lived to each other? Uh, Maybe when I was in Harlem, but we weren't really friends then. Yeah, yeah. And we I was hanging. I was yeah, I was in the West, East Village back then, so that's just a straight shot. Yeah. All right, I'm excited. And when you're moving soon or what? Uh one month. We'll see about that. Yeah, yeah. Well we're buying appliances today. Wow. So that's actually like some semblance of a home. Hey, there's a microwave in this fucker. No kidding. I'm excited. I gotta see this place. I'm Woo! dying. I got videos. I don't care about the video. I want to go in fresh. All right, all right. What's a video? We'll do a blindfold. We'll walk you in. We'll have a big surprise party. Okay. I don't understand the blindfold aspect, but I'm looking forward to it. Well, I don't want you to have my address. Uh, I want your uh, a suit. Ah, <laughs> I see. All right. All right. So, um... Uh, now I had the we had the gender strike or what is it the counter strike what was it tonight the the writer strike what was that thing over the weekend with the with the uh, with the computers. Oh, the uh, IT failure yes. outage. 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 Yes, like a grinder at the RNC. Exactly. Um, so, like gender strike or whatever it happened on Friday. Why are you saying gender strike? What is, is it? Called? I think it's called the conversation strike or the. What the hell are you talking about? Uh, three strikes, you're out. Lucky gender? strike. No. Gender strike. It's called. There was a word for it. Uh, 
God, I gave it a word. Something strike. Oh, I don't know. Strike. Construction strike. Is that the company? Give name? it a goog if you if you don't mind. There. I just thought it was all the headlines I saw were IT outage. They called. They had a hashtag. It was a blowing up. So they gave it a hashtag. So they had to have a quick zippy name. Oh, I missed the hashtag. Yeah, it was something strike. All right. The, the audience is strike. queefing right now. I don't uh, know. But, strike force. Yeah. Either way, I got I got to the. Uh, you had the thing where you wake up at seven, which I know you have a kid, but for me that's uh, that's a bitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get to the airport, you're pulling up to Newark, everything's going great, you got the Uber on time, you made it out of the house, flight canceled. Oh, oh shit. And I'm going to Sioux Falls. Ooh. So it's a fucking Crowd zip- strike. Crowd, Crowd strike. strike. Thank you. And what is that? That I, I never, what does that mean? I don't know. All the crowds were striking and angry. It's a horrible word because it sounds like a, like we're striking. Yeah, I but it's just a crash, strike. computer crash. Yeah, it just says major hotels, including Marriott International, and some other hotels were impacted uh, with right. delays. We don't care. Crowd yeah. strike. Crowd strike. So everything. I get to the airport. People's hairs are on fire. Babies are crying. People are saying the n word. It's mayhem. <laughs> so <laughs> you go to my parents' house. <laughs> so uh, when I got there, I added the last one, but I go right up to. I got the United. You know, we're up on. Platinum or, or uh, Mosaic or whatever you want to call it. We're all up on the high notches and the status. And I go in there and I go, hey, let me talk to the, the fat lady back there. They go, hey, you're, you're 1K. So I get in there and she goes, I'm so sick of these these uh, airport cunts with the typing. Yes, yes. Well, they don't tell you anything. So you're just standing there like an idiot. You go, anything? I've been standing here for 10 minutes. They're like, And they talk real low for some reason. They're like, well, we're not really seeing anything right now. Hold on. Yes, serious. they do that. They yeah. talk to themselves. Yeah. And you, and you go, what was that? And it's that old Quinn joke, the great Colin Quinn joke, where he goes, oh, I'm just um, I'm just thinking out loud. He's like, yeah, there's a word for that. It's called talking. Yes, yes. I'm Tell me. Saying. Tell me what you're thinking out loud. Tell me what you're seeing. I, I'm just seeing it's like Battleship. I don't. Did you sink behind? I don't know what's going on behind that screen. So I got a line about 30 miles back. She's like... That's not going to work. I'm like, well, what? And now I'm Googling. So I'm like, okay, Sioux Falls. I can get into Omaha. Then I can drive two hours. And she's like, mm, Omaha will get you in at about 11.30 p.m. And you're like, well, the show's at 7. She's like, ugh. And then how about this one? This is the biggest pet peeve of all time is when they go, you go, my flight's canceled. I have a connection. Looks like I'm going to miss the connection so we can figure something out. She goes, hold on. What's your flight number? Confirmation. Oh, you're going to miss your connection. That's what I said. Exactly. God, it drives me crazy. It's infuriating. So eventually I just go, what about Minneapolis? It's a four-hour drive from Minneapolis. She's like, okay, Minneapolis, I can get to you by five. And I'm like, all right, I'll get, I'll do it. And so fly to Minneapolis, rent the car, drive five hours, show started two hours late. God damn. But we made but it you work. you did it. You did the show. I it did the out. show. I can't believe it. I, You know, you have a big plan. You're like, all right, I'll land at two. I'll take a shower. I'll take a nap. I'll jerk off. But your plan is screwed. Now you're in the car for four hours driving through fucking Minnesota. Yeah, what's that old adage? How do you make God laugh? You tell him your plans for the future. Ooh, I never heard it. Yeah, it's not bad. And uh, how do you make the devil fart? You watch long legs and you jerk off. Here, here. But uh, like yeah, that sucks. So you had to, you flew out Friday. Mm. Yeah, see, I was grateful because I had a Thursday show. I was in. In Hotlanta. Oh. And it was one of those things where you get down there, you do the show, and the next morning everyone's like, thank God you got out. Right. And, and then it's always weird when you start getting texts before you hear the news. Aha. Uh-huh. Because I wake up, and you know, I have a child. I'm concerned about my wife and child. So I got four texts being like, thank God you're in Atlanta. Thank God you took yeah. off. And I'm like, did, did the World Trade Center blow up again? Is Obama <laughs> back? Is Osama back? Whoever. I think Biden fell over. So I look, and it's, yeah, there's a crowd source or whatever the fuck. And uh, I was happy to get out, but then then you immediately have the thing of like, am I getting home on Sunday? Yeah. And I got to tell you, I've never been more grateful for anything in my life. We got we went to the airport Sunday, Atlanta, which is the busiest airport in the world. That airport stinks. It's huge, and it was insane. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, mm. there was literally four hundred people in line. To ask a question at like oh, the help desk. Oh yeah. And people just sleeping, and maybe this is my own privilege or whatever and now i have a baby you want to get home to of course but i'm like if i had to do anything like that i would just be like i'll fly in a few days i'll just i had the same thought i'll stay here i'll sleep on the side of the road i can't wait in a line that's more than four people yeah and it's a crazy line of erratic people everyone's doing the wait in line and the phone 
Because oh. you got to get on the customer service whore. And then you have these people that have like three, four kids. Yeah. And they got all the iPads. And I'm like, they're just, the kids are sleeping on the lap. Yes. They got a baby on the head. And God bless these people that are traveling around with multiple fucking children with Crazy. the delay and all the stuff. But it was why, I mean, just swarms of people. And again, I'm lucky we travel so much. I got clear and pre check and digital ID. And I just zoomed past everybody, which was. Very uh, fortunate, and our yeah. flight was one of the ones that took off. But I was thinking about that because you had it on Friday, and I said this to Matt Wayne. It's rare that you just look at the board and you see all red canceled. Yes, yes. It's usually delayed. It's pretty rare to have just like, we're not going. Yeah, oh yeah. And that's you're like, it. all right, well, that's the end of that. Especially when nothing happens. I can see if uh, Gavin Newsom got fucked in the ass. You're like, oh, we're canceling everything. We have to take a moment to talk about it. But this was just, we don't know, a computer farted. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it was a it was a wild weekend, and uh, I was grateful to not have to deal with any of that. But I'm glad you got there. I got there by the skin of my foreskin, and uh, we did the show. And it was one of those shows where there's a feeling in the air, like you run in, you got the plane grease, you haven't showered, you're wrinkly, and uh, the crowd's like, "He's here!" And it's Sioux Falls, so what are they doing? Right. You know, we called them like, "Hey, we're gonna be a couple hours late." They're like, "All right," and uh, they got divorced, came to the show. We had a great time and uh, hit the titty bar after, which was exciting. Is Sioux Falls is South Dakota? Yeah. And there's tits in South Dakota? Oh, and labia. Because I think there's only like 380 people there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think these small towns have the best tits. I guess so, because the women there, it's, there's not other options. They're like, I'm gonna, I can either work at CVS or do a rain dance or be a stripper. Yeah, I think we had a Native American stripper, and I think it did rain while she was on. But. <laughs> Uh, they have powers. But yeah, so uh, we had a great time. And also, it's fun because it's a small town. So you go to the titty bar, and the guy walks by, you know, dropping 20s, and he goes, Hey, Cheryl, here you go. I'll see you at daycare or whatever. Right. They all know each other. Um, and it was in a barn, which was weird. You know, it's a South Dakota. But uh, I also did a thing where I walked on stage. I was like, here we are, South Dakota. First time, baby. Last time. And one guy went, fuck you. <laughs> oh, wow. Huge laugh. Yeah, so they don't play out there. Oh, jeez. Well, I think that's pretty nice. It was fun. Yeah. Now, he, sweet. here's the clinker. Clink me. Well, Youngblood's opening. He is going to Houston. So he's got to go from... We, we drove to Cedar Rapids the next day for another gig. He goes to... Chicago to Houston, and I go from Chicago to Newark. His flight got canceled the night before mm. on Saturday, so he's freaking out. He's like, what am I going to do? And he's on hold. We're out drinking. He's like, I got to go back. I can't deal with this too much. I go, I get it. He didn't make it. He had to sleep in Chicago. He had to take a bus. He was full plane trains. He got fucked. I got fucked on the way there. He got fucked on the way out. I think he's still in Chicago, literally. Oh, wow. And uh, now how about this? Uh, that was a fucking <laughs> ghastly sound. Yeah, a ghostly. <laughs> What's ghastly exactly? I don't know. Is that similar to like I think it's ghost? Holocaust. I don't know. That's a good question. Ghastly is like ah, but a ghost is like ah. Yeah. So it's the same thing, but just ghostly, different letter. Yes. And is there a ghostly? But isn't it, it's ghastly? Like the the villain says that these this ghastly bitch got my way again. But ghastly's like hungry, right? No. Like you're like you're um you're whittling away to nothing. Huh. He's ghastly. Like I think I think Biden might be ghastly. Oh now. really? Yeah, I think if you're like thin and can you get a definition of ghastly? ghastly. Then there's dastardly, and then there's a ghast. He was a ghast. Oh yeah. A ghast is like, holy shit, that was crazy. But maybe you're a ghast at a ghastly body. Ah, uh-huh, at a ghast. Like I think the Somalians were like ghastly. So yes. we had to go over there and drop food. I guess. Oh I think. Famished right? is up there too. Ghastly is an adverb for famished. I don't uh, know about that. It says ghastly causing great horror or fear, frightness. Yeah. <gasps> or extremely it. unwell. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Ghastly. Okay. okay. Yeah, well, I think we were close. Biden is ghastly. He's unwell. It says he always felt ghastly first thing in the morning. Oh. So that I doesn't seem saying. right. Yeah. That's gassy. I'm, I'm gassy, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, we're learning things. And then I'll just wrap up with this. So... Got the ready, you know, I'm trying to make this flight back on Sunday. 8 a.m. flight, hungover, driving back the rental car. I hate dropping that rental car off, but I always get the gas so I don't have to fill it up, which is helpful. I know you don't like it. Sucker's bet. Yeah, it's not great, but when you pull that puppy in, 
cluck, 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 on that when the engine's knocking because there's no gas. That's a great feeling. Good feeling. So you get to the uh, Cedar Rapids airport. There's no spaces because uh, I guess no one's renting cars anymore. So I'm Ooh. driving around the parking lot. They're like, you gotta, you gotta drop the car off in a space, and then you go in. You put the keys and envelope in a slot. Remember that old move? Yeah, yeah. Hate it. it. Feels so shifty. I'm like, is this real? I know. Well, it's weird. These small towns, they have different things. They yes. like, just mail it to us. Get, yeah. a, get a stamp <laughs> yeah. with Norman Rockwell on it right. and, and mail it to us. Yeah. So you're like, is this safe? Okay, whatever. But they're like, what slot is it in? So you got to fill it out. I'm like, there is no slot. I parked it on the curb because there was no it slot. Is. And they and here's the crazy thing. As I was walking in after dropping the rental car, I'm kind of hustling. And the guy, I just hear, boop, on a, on a loudspeaker. It was a recording. And it says... Please be safe out there. This is the airport. And don't ever leave your car on the curb. It will get towed. Oh and I'm boy. like, was that for me? It was like one of those old movies where they're talking to you at the TV. Right. And I was like, huh. But there was no slot. So I'm just going, ah, and I ask a guy, and he goes, fuck off. And I go, okay. And then uh, I just went to my terminal, and I got hit with these guys. Walk into the gate. I'm like, all right, I'm going to make it. I got six minutes till we're boarding. Just got to get through security. Hey, Norman! All right, it's probably a fan. I turn to my right. Two fat guys with glasses. They look like cats. And they go... Oh, ghastly. <laughs> they go, uh, can we get a couple signatures? They got these big old dioramas of everything I've ever done. My face. Wow. And I go, what's this? The, you got to sell these on eBay? And they go, yeah, probably. And I'm signing, I'm signing. It's like this. I'm doing this shit. It's, they're so big, and there's wow. two of them. Like cardboard cutouts? Yes. Cardboard cutouts, photos, headshots, uh, album covers. And I go, geez, and these guys are so good. You can tell they do this for a living. They're like, Soup to Nuts was great. Big Tuesday over here. We love We Might Be Drunk. I got a bottle of Bodega Cat. Congrats on the wife. Oh, uh, Greg the Cat. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, you guys know more about me than my father. And I'm signing, and they keep shuffling it. They're like, one more, one more. Oh. And I'm like... Now I got two minutes. Why are they at the airport? Because they know I'm going to be there. Oh, my God. You're one of those guys. I guess so. You and made I, it, Jerry. I know, but I hate it. I was like, I made it, but I hate it. And I was like, all right, guys, I got to go. I'm going to miss my flight. They go, we don't care. And then they go, let's get a few photos. And I got my shirt off. I kissed one. <laughs> and eventually I had to kick a guy in the tits, and I ran to the exit. Oh, my God. That's wild. That's just, was... Shouldn't they know your hotel? Come to my hotel. Please. Fuck me in the ass. I'll fight you in. <laughs> Blow me. Come in the room. Yeah. Get ice for me. But, I mean, this. This was uh, elaborate, quite the poster board. Wow. Well, that's exciting. I mean, that's a nice feeling. You made the flight. I made the flight by all the right, skin so of my all's dick. Well, that ends well, I guess. But um, yeah, that's those guys are like psychotic. They're wacky guys, but they're pros because they're buttering you up as you're signing because they just want to keep you signing. Because the more you sign, the more the mo money they get. Well, I guess it's an easier town there because Cedar Rapids. There's only three flights out, so they're like he's definitely on either the flight to Chicago or the flight to good point Minnesota. I guess good point. Yeah, you can't just go to LaGuardia and be like, I'll guess. <laughs> no, but the good news with LaGuardia is you'll see eight. You'll see. Pavarotti in there. Right. Good point. But then you have to print out a Pavarotti pick. That's a lot of ink. <laughs> he's fat, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, my cat's fat, but he's fat. Uh, JK, LOL. Uh, but my, my cats came in hot making fat jokes, so to oh, me, really? that's an invite to make fat jokes. Yeah, it's true. I mean, oh, isn't really? that isn't that why isn't well, that how it works? If you make a joke about being fat, that's like, hey. But with his looks, he's never come in hot anywhere. <laughs> He's a very handsome boy. That's true. The face is nice. Yeah. Uh, downhill is rough. Uh, what are you going to do? Yeah. So, hey, they enjoy those signatures. You're going to make about 18 cents on eBay. I don't know who's buying a, fi a picture of me, and I don't care. I don't think people care about signed stuff anymore. It's not the 1840s. Well, it's exciting to get signed stuff if you're the one that's getting it signed. I was just talking yes. about this because uh, I'll get to this in a minute. I went to the, a tennis tournament this weekend, and. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll have to get into the details more in a second, but the photos the, look great. The lady, oh, it's so cool. The the lady who befriended Tuz, a wife of a Tuesday, maybe she'll become a Tuesday herself. I don't know. She has these cards that she hands out to kids that have all been signed by Andy Roddick and Nick Kyrgios. Ah. But she's like, "Do you want some?" And I'm like, "I'll take some. I'm going to give them to my nephew, I guess. Maybe he'll like them." But ha just having a thing that's been signed. It's not as exciting as meeting someone and be like, could you sign yes. this for me? Yes, of course. And then you're like, I met Ken Griffey Jr., you know, I kissed him on the lips, he signed my asshole, and now I have it tattooed. Sure. That's a lot better than like, oh yeah, I know a guy who knows a person who handed me this thing. Totally. 
So, and it's something to say too when you meet a guy. Go, hey, can you sign this? Otherwise, you go, uh, how's your wife's pussy? You right. Know? It's good to have an in. Yeah, it's always weird. Some people are so good. I want to give a shout out to all the twos. Gay. We have the best fans in the bit. I mean, online they're horrendous, but in sure. person they're unbelievable. Twos gay. That's the nature of the, the, the times we're living in, I guess. But some are so so good at the meet and greet. Yes. There's like levels of meet and greet fandom. And some are just, they get a bunch of good stuff in. They're like, hey, I'm sober. I love your podcast. I hope you do more of this. That was a great show. Best live show. You're way better than Tim Dillon. And your you side, Russell Brand is weird. Take yes. care. And I'm like, this, thank you. Yes. And then they leave. And you're like, woo, that was fantastic. <sighs> That's lunch. Others, they stand in the back that they linger because they want to be the last one. Oh, I hate the linger. Because they think, if I'm the last one, I can spend a half an exactly. hour Exactly. And it's always brutal. It linger. Some... Do the meet, and they're great, great greet, great, 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 great funny great. line, good points. And then you do the rest of the meet and greet, and all of a sudden, they're back. Oh, you see them back again the second time. Uh -huh. And I used to think about this with, with when Louie, when I was working with Louie a bunch, is like we would talk to someone on the street that would come up to him, and then they would leave and come back again. And I always thought of um, the line Hannibal Lecter. When he's like, when she goes to hand him the uh, the the fucking what do you call that the survey and he's like oh no no you were doing so well that's how uh, I felt I was like you had done such a great job yes and then you come back for more because I think they leave and they go that went well yes let me come back in for more you got to get it all in one greet one shot and you're out yeah you can't do that with a lady you can't hit on a lady get her number and then go back up to her at the bar and go. So, you want to see my dick? Right. You got to get in, get out. I mean, you can do that, but it doesn't work out. I've tried no. it three times this month. So did um, Paul Rubens. But, hey folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Raycon. Back to school shopping and picking up some new stuff is a fun way to kick off the change of season. Mm. An absolute must-have for this fall are Raycon's best-selling everyday Earbuds. Nice. They now feature active, uh oh, tough word, ergonomic design, multi point connectivity that lets you pair with two devices at once. Hey, Whoa. that's really nice. And active noise cancellation. The noise cancellation is key, especially in a city like this Ooh, or yeah. on a flight. <laughs> If that's not enough, it even has a quick charge function. 10 minutes of charging gives you 90 minutes of battery. That's huge. Wow. These are the best ear earbuds I ever used. Scratch that. These are the best earbuds I've ever used. They kick ass. I mean, literally, we're on the go. We use them all the oh, time. Yeah. I always have something going on, a podcast, a meditation, music. Flights. So 10 minutes of charging is huge because, uh, especially at an airport, you wait for the plane, uh. you plug them in for 10 minutes, they'll last you almost the whole flight from just 10 minutes. You charge for 20 minutes, forget about it. You're good to go. These things are great. I run with them. They don't come out of my ear. Even if I snap my ankle, these things stay right in there. You got that right. My tunes are rocking. If you're still not convinced, Raycon even has a 30-day happiness guarantee for super easy returns so you have nothing to lose. Yeah. To do this. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays today to get 20 to 40% off site-wide. Wow. 40 is crazy. That's right. You'll get up to 40% off everything on Raycon's website when you go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. Buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. Yeah. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories brought to you by Blue Chew. When things are floppy below the belt, turn to Blue Chew. Blue Chew is the online service that sends ED medicine right to your door with the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra. It's going to cost a lot less, I'll tell you that. Everything's done online. No awkward trip to the doctor required. Just meet with one of our licensed medical providers online, and once you're approved, you'll get your prescription in days. I love the Blue Chew. It works. Keep that puppy in your pocket. You never know when you're going to need it. Don't even have the stress. Don't even have the bullshit. Just pop it, and you'll be hard as a rock for anybody and anything. Take them anytime, day or night. You'll be ready when the opportunity arises. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. As a special deal for Tuesdays with Stories listeners, try Blue Chew free. When you use our promo code TUESDAYS at checkout, just pay five claims for shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code TUESDAYS, to receive your first month free. Blue, visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety info. We thank you for sponsoring the show, Blue Chew. 
Look, I got I got please. A, a bit of a to me it's like epic but it's not really epic. It's okay. married with children epic. It's not mm. 2015 epic where Good we were show. fucking fat ladies and uh, making people watch. All right, well give me a wholesome epic. We it's need a, a wholesome nice, epic. A Hallmark movie every now and then, Hallmark Norman. Well, so many moons ago, this is the thing about um, Fatherhood, I'm I'm learning. It's, it's you'll, you got coming up soon, which is very exciting. Another good movie. And uh, isn't it Parenthood? Ah. Fatherhood is the Bill Cosby book. Ah, yes, yes. I, I that really put it. me to bed. I think I have it, but uh, okay. Parenthood's a hell of a movie. Great movie. Yeah. Thomas Hulse. Who's Thomas Hulse? He's Amadeus. Oh yeah, yeah. He's great. I great actor. Confuse him with um. <laughs> he looks like Chad. Low, Chad Low. Yeah, like Rob Low, Chad Low. Are they bro? They look similar. Well, Rob Low and Chad Low are brothers. That's a new Low. But Chad Low <laughs> looks like that guy. Oh, okay. You so ever see them next to each other? No, he's an uglier Low. I think so. He's a lesser Low. Chad Low is low. the one that's married to Hillary Swank, and she didn't thank him at the Oscars. Ouch. I believe. She didn't swank him. And then they got divorced. Oh, no swank Which you. my wife wins an Oscar. Oh, Katz is pulling it up. I don't oh, even know which one's I can one's see which. a Hulse. Yeah, I can yeah. see a Hulse. Wow, he is the uglier Low. Yeah. And wow. he got uh, Low bar. He, yeah, she won an Oscar, and he was just standing there waiting for his thank you. She never thanked him. If my wife won an Oscar and she didn't thank me, that would be the end of that relationship. We're done. Swank you very much. I would take the Oscar, put it in my ass so it's all muddy, and leave it behind. Hell yeah. Katz is nice. He laughs. Chuck, you don't laugh enough. Yeah, Chuck's got some problems. And what's good about Katz is he jiggles when he laughs, you know? Yeah. All right, that was yes. the last one. Yeah, I know. It's like a T-Rex. I can see the ripple in my cup. <laughs> so many moons ago, oh, this is what I was going to say about fatherhood, is, and I heard that this is a, someone gave advice, let it change you. Because it's going to change you if you resist the change. The old Elliot you're Page. Fucked. Yes. So I'm letting it change me, and you know me, still the same OG, but I've been low-key. I like to get after it. I want to go hiking into a concert. I want to wake up at 6 a.m., swim in the ocean, go for a hike, go to the Mariners game, come back, go to the strip club, and then watch a movie. I'll be on the back half. Well, now I got to just do one thing, if that. Ah, that's got to be hard. You must resent the child, hate the child, want to get rid of him. I don't resent the child. I mean, I want to get rid of him, but, you know, just for a couple of months. Oh, that'd be nice. Let him come around in a, in a, when he's got the teeth and he's talking. That'll be nice. Ghastly. So I book a few months ago, you know me, I like, I like rock and roll. The Foo Fighters and the Pretenders are at City Field. That's big. Now, City Field's down the street from my house. Foo Fighters, they're legends, you know, rock and roll. And the Pretenders, I love the Pretenders. Big Pretenders guy over here. Well, and what's their hit? They got a few. You got... Um, it's a lady, right? The, the Chrissy lead. Hind, yeah. yeah. Well, they got, I'll stand by you. Wow. That was a later hit. Oh, big one. And then they got... Um, Gotta use my, my, my imagination. Oh, oh yeah. I'm gonna make you see... Wow. Nobody else here. And then they got brass. Uh, they got, and then there's um, uh, the other one. Is, now I'm back on the chain. Oh, game. yeah. That's a great back tune. I like game. that song. Yeah, Pretenders kick ass. So anyways, I'm excited to go. I tell Sarah, we're going, and it's a few months away. We'll have to get a babysitter, the whole thing. And so it's coming around. It's getting closer and closer, and you start looking at that calendar, and you're like, all right, that night. And now every morning, the baby's in a sleep regression. So we're waking up at 3.30 in the morning, 4 in the morning. It's mm. a pain in the ass. And so we're exhausted. Yeah. And you still got to do all the same work. You got the podcast. You got to book your dates. You got to book your flights. You got the hotel. You got to write new jokes. You got to put up your videos. You got to put up your clips. It's a lot of, it's a lot of gum. Yes, and yes, And then you gotta, you're waking up. You're not sleeping. So I'm like, we got to get a babysitter. So I hit up 10 people. They all say no. So finally, number 11, I get Feehan. I'm like, would you do it? Because, you know, she's certainly not the first or second or third or fourth choice. Sure, sure. She's I mean, uh, on OnlyFans. Yeah, she's got a she's a bit of a mental case, if you ask me. Yeah. I'm kidding, ass. of course. She's, um, eh, I don't care for the ass, but... Um, You're the one. I'm kidding. I love it. But I'm, I'm joking about all this. She's the first choice. She's 
my son's best friend. So we hit her up. Hey, can you watch the baby Wednesday night? He goes to bed at 7. It'll just be a couple hours. Then you can do whatever you want. You can do yourself in my bed. Please film it. Yes, send me the link. Uh, <laughs> so she goes, of course, I'll be there. I love you. God bless. I say, bring some of those cookies from that nice place in your building. She says, fuck you. You don't need cookies, you fat shit. Nice. That's a friend. It is a good friend. So friend hand. we got the babysitter all set up. She's coming. And we're about two days out, and I go, God, it's gonna, we got to go out there at 5 o'clock. The pretenders come on at 5.30. Wow, that early? Yeah, it's a long show. they got three bands playing. And I go, boy, we're going to take the uh, end train to the 7 train. There's going to be 50,000 people there. Then we're going to have to watch a few songs. And then I guess we're going to have to leave early because we can't have Karen there all night. She wakes up early, and Sarah goes, you know, I've never really been a big Foo Fighters gal. Oh, okay. And now it's all coming out. So I'm going, yeah, well, it'll be fun, though. we got to do it. What are we going to do? Stop going to concerts. We don't want to be these old assholes that don't do things. We're going. And the whole time, we just wanna, we're dying to see Maxine, which is the sequel to X. Oh, is that which right? I got the poster over here. Thanks for whoever gave that to me. How we hot love is she X. in that poster? So hot. Mia Goth. Very good. So we go, oh, we're dying to see Maxie. When are we going to get a chance to see this? So finally, we just sit there together like a good couple and go, what if we had dinner in a movie? Ooh, and she I goes, love it. Ah, I want to. That's what I want to do. Let's just do that. And I go, you know what? Fuck it. We'll give the tickets away. Wow. We're going to go to a dinner and a movie. Why are we making our stuff? Because it's all ego, Jerry. I just don't want to cancel right. plans. I don't want to be a guy who's like, I don't go to concerts anymore. I'm too tired. Right. You're Biden. He didn't want to step down. You didn't want to step. I didn't want to step. But then everybody I've ever met and know and love was like, please don't do it. So <laughs> Obama's telling you not to go to the concert. I go, let's just go to a movie. Who cares? Put my ego aside. I'm letting it change me. Yes. I don't want to go to a stadium show anyways. It's way out there. We'll be sitting around. It'll be crowded. My father's gay. It's a lot, Jerry. And it's nice for Karen because I'm like, we'll be back by 10 o'clock. So there's a 615 movie. Karen comes over at 5. We hang out. We bullshit. She's with the baby. The baby loves her. Vice versa. It's adorable. It's very sweet. We're very grateful. Great. So we go, all right, take care. Comb your hair. We leave, we go out into the city, I get a car, we go out, have nice slices of pizza, which was fun, because mm. eventually we're like, we'll get a meal, and then she's like, I haven't had a slice in a long time, so we sat, very romantic, we had a Coke with two straws, uh. eat the pizza, we watch Maxine, I was a little disappointed, it's still fun though, yeah, we're okay. having a blast, we're in there, it's great 80s soundtrack, there wasn't enough tits, still liked it, we go out after, we're like... Let's go get. Let's go to Shake Shack. We're on the Upper East. Yes. Go to Shake Shack. We shove some burgers and fries. We were like teenagers in love, Jerry. Pizza and burg? Well, pizza and candy, by the way. Whoa. I ate, I ate candy, pizza. I'm going to look like cats by the end of the week. Yeah, you're Kevin McAllister out here. You're eating whatever you want. Oh, we live, baby. So then we eat the burger, the fries, the milkshake. We make out. And I'm like, let's not go home. Yeah, it's still only, because we saw our 6 o'clock movie. Sure. It's still only 9 o'clock. So I go, let's get a walk-in. It'll be a romantic. It'll be like a Woody Allen film. We're on the Upper East Side. We're never on the Upper East anymore. We go for a nice, long walk. I find a cafe. I'm like, let's go to the cafe. Ooh and it's on like 82nd between 1st and 2nd. We go walk all the way down there. It's beautiful. We're holding hands. I'm touching her ass. I'm smelling her pussy. Yeah. Only because she didn't shower. <laughs> But we get to the cafe, we walk in, I'm like, hey, I want a cup of chamomile. And he goes, oh, you're looking for a cafe? The cafe closed at four, this wine bar. We, uh. He goes, come downstairs, we give you the best wine ever. And the guy was so charming and French that I was like, should we have wine? Wow, he got you, huh? And, uh, I, was take, I was walking down the stairs and I was like, ah, I can't go down, what are you, crazy? Yeah. So we leave, I said, we'll be back when the cafe's open, we're never going back. You got that right. We leave. We're back up Second Avenue. We're walking. We walk by the comic strip, which is awkward oh, because wow. not awkward, but you're like you're on a romantic date night, and all of a sudden you're like the comics. It's weird when you're like yes. we're away from comedy, and all of a sudden you're like ah yes yes. You see the little whiteboard out there, yeah. like Sheba Mason, you know, uh, D. F. Sweetler, and uh, you know Chris Rock. You're right. And we it's go. That's quite a lineup. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. So we go. Oh wow, that's crazy. The comic strip. We're talking. We're, we're sharing old times. It's beautiful. Then there's all this dry lightning. It's dry like, lightning? Not raining, ah. but it's lightning. Ah, I never heard of that Big, term. the sky is just lighting up. Boo, boo. And she's like, this is so romantic. I was like, it's beautiful. We stop, we make out. I finger her. I got to wash my hands because it's not good. <laughs> Hell yeah. So then we walk for about a mile, and it's just the best night of my life. We feel a couple of sprinkles, and I was like a Native American. I grab her tits, and I go... 
let's get a lift. We gotta get a lift. <laughs> and I grab the lift, order it. It's a block up. We get in the lift. The second we get in the lift, worst. Ra- I don't know if you're here. Whoa, last Wednesday, no. Heaviest rain I've ever oh, seen. Oh yes. Down- I mean, I've never seen. It was like Texas rain. I remember in this. New York, and it was like boom. boom. I yeah. mean, you couldn't even see an inch outside the the, the windshield. Yes. We timed it so perfect. We were to- perfectly dry. We ride back in Texas forever. I'm texting Karen. I'm like, we're on our way. She's like, I don't care. Take your time. I'm watching The Crown or whatever, diddling the kid. We get back, and then we got to run. I put the jacket over her head. We yeah. run from the sidewalk. We're soaked because it's so rainy. We get to the door. We kiss on the lips. Oh. Key in that door. We're home at 10 o'clock. Wow. We bullshit with Karen. Everything went great with the baby. He's sound asleep. She's sound awake. We have a nice time. We say, thanks so much. We kick her in the ass. Don't pay her a dime for doing it. You got that right. And uh, she leaves. We make love. We go to bed. Now, I'm not even thinking until we lay in bed. The concert was destroyed by the rain. Oh! They played three songs. They play a couple of jams. Thunder, lightning, huge delay. Everyone's got a file underneath the stadium. Oh, they sit there for hours. You made the right choice. Finally, they cancel the show. They're like, we'll make up for it Friday night. We'll play extra long. But I wasn't ever long. Ah. Uh, we weren't going Friday night. We made the perfect choice. Wow. We had the best date of our lives, and the concert would have been horrible. You chose love. We would have been soaked. Wow. How good is that? That's great. And you know what sucks as, or as sad as a guy is like, you can have this beautiful romantic night, the pizza, the sex. Nothing feels better than getting that lift. When oh, you nail lift that good. lift, oh, that's a great feeling. Oh, it was a great feeling all the way around, and it was so just a wonderful, wonderful night. And you just feel, because every decision I've ever made, I question. Sure. I'm like, should we have gone to the concert? Should I have moved to Nebraska? Should I have a better <laughs> podcast partner? You know what I mean? You're yeah. always just questioning things. FOMO. Yes. FOMO. Homosexual. And uh, it all worked out. It was all pipes, and what a what a night! What a night! That is a beauty! Wow, pizza, ice cream, sex, Karen. I love everything but one. Yeah, it was all fun. It all made me want to come. Every every last thing. That's and, great. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Maxine, no no bueno, huh? I like Max. I I loved X so much. Then they did Pearl, which I, was a totally different kind of movie that I liked. I just didn't like it as much. And then this was like a direct sequel, and it wasn't as thrashery. There was like gunplay. And I have a real problem with Devil. I don't care about oh, the Devil. Oh, more Devil, huh? I don't, when everyone's there, like, I have a, uh, what do you call that? Deviled Egg? And uh, Opposition, uh, what's, I, I don't think of, I can't think of words anymore. My mind Gasly. is mush. <laughs> but I don't like uh, an allergy to like preachy. And the Lord has come to thee oh, in any kind of yeah, movie, yeah. whether it be a horror or a drama. Anytime someone's like, pre- it gives me the willies. Yeah, you know, I'm with you on that. I don't love that. And here's a weird one for me. Anything Middle Easty, I find hard to get into. And Ooh. I got no problem with Middle Eastern people. I like Middle Eastern food. I have a sari I wear at home. But <laughs> the Middle East movies are drab and dusty and and gray to me. Like, yeah. Even like a Black Hawk Down, which I can see is a great movie. Eh, it's too much Middle East. Hurt Locker, Middle East. I it, know. I, I don't know. It's, it's it's my own personal thing, but it, it bugs me. I know what you mean. Lawrence of Arabia. Yes. Even, it's a struggle. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I mean sprawling Black Hawk, deserts. Black Hawk Down is like got that crazy like 90s filter, too. It's like oh, all yeah. dark and weird. Yes, like, yes. Yeah, do it. And I know it's good, and it's got a great cast and all that, but it's just something about that that sandy, that that territory over there, like the weird hut houses and the brick and the, I don't know, it's a bummer. And the first Star Wars, too. Yes. Similarly, you're like, ah, it's drab. Tatooine. Drab is no good. No, nah, I don't like drab. Drab is bad. What is yeah. it? Uh, Jason's holding up a thing for us here. I don't know what it says. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, wow. Well, we got the clock. The drab four. We got the clock right underneath. God bless you. Yeah, sweet man. He's thoughtful. He's a good boy. Very thoughtful. And yes. his initials are JK. That's fun for comedy. Hey, JK Rowling. JK LOL. All right. Okay. Um, hey, folks. Tuesday with Stories is brought to you by Better Help. Oh, yeah. When your schedule is packed with big work projects, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Better Help can get you back on track with online therapy you can do 
from anywhere. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You can chat with your therapist on the phone, over video chat, or even on their messaging platform. Getting started is really easy. Just fill out a quick questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you'll be on your way to setting boundaries, finding time for yourself, and reaching your personal goals. Therapy has changed my life. I used Mm. to have panic attacks every single day. I had horrible anxiety. I was a fucking drunk. I shouldn't have sworn. Maybe they could have bleeped that. Anyways, I was a drunk with with uh, with with tinnitus and Mm. um, reflux and uh, hypochondria and panic attacks. All gone by the wayside, thanks to therapy and a few other things. It's so hard to make, make time sense. for the stuff that makes you happy. Let BetterHelp bring more fun into your life. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Let's get back to the show. Yeah. All right, I got a couple other things, but Please. I want to hear more for you. No, right. I mean... uh Let's see. I, I think I had some old stuff, but let me let me look it up while you uh, you you lay it on me, Fatty. All right. Well, I went down to Atlanta, and I got to give a big shout out to all the Atlanta gays. My God, oh, really? And all the folks in Atlanta, they go, "Hey, I know this isn't a comedy town. Thanks for coming." They act like Atlanta is Sioux Falls. They're like, no. "Thanks for coming here." I'm like, "This is a this is a good spot." I love Atlanta, but I think the club. You know, the punchline used to be this legendary room, and now it's kind of in a diner, so it, I think people don't look at it as good. But it's still a great room, and hot crowds, and a ton of Tuesdays came out. We appreciate it. I have a new shirt I debuted, and they Ooh, sold like hot cakes. Hey, let's hear it, Fatty. Well, I don't want to give it away, because it's a, it's a joke. So, oh, okay, okay. Uh, but they'll be, I'll be selling them all over town, and they, they, they just went. All right, all right. That, that cakes, that extra cash was nice, so thanks to everyone for the support. But, uh, yeah, flew down to Atlanta with Matt Wayne. I love MW. And I got to apologize to one fan because he reached out and he goes, I know you're a tennis fan. I know you like playing tennis. I got a hookup. We can play doubles, you and your opener. You can play me and my buddy. We'll play. And I went, I'll be there. I love tennis and I love you. We're going to play tennis on Saturday. And I, here, get excited. I go, hey, I got a tennis hookup. We're going to go play. Let's do it. So a few hours later, I get a message, an email from a woman named Becky Dent, which is so similar to Bucky Dent, a famous uh, New York Yankee Red Sox killer. Uh huh. And it says, Atlanta Open. And I, I thought, I don't know. I thought maybe it was an invite to make love or something. Sure, we're open. <laughs> so I read it. The big tennis tournament's in town, and she goes, Hey, my husband's a huge Tuesday. I run social media for the um, Atlanta Open. Would you want to come and uh, watch some tennis for free and maybe shoot some content? Woo! King of content. So I took my phone, put it on vibrate, shoved it in my ass, and came all over my sister's tits, because hey. uh, this is the best thing I've ever heard. You could skip the tennis after that. So I screenshot it. I said it to Matt Wayne. I go, guess what? We're going to the, the Atlanta Open. Wow. Now, at one point, she says, I thought maybe you could try to take a, a cup, return a couple serves from some of our big hitters. Whoa. Ugh. And now I'm like. So excited. That's all I want in my life is yes. to have a man just smash me in the face with his balls. Sure. So, but that ended up not happening. But we get the invite. So then I just blew off the guy that invited me to play tennis. And I'm sorry, sir. I appreciate it. But I'm like, I got the better offer. I'm going to go play tennis with the pros. Yeah. He, that's open. He's closed. So he's out. He's closed. Sorry, sir. Next time we'll play doubles. Not really. But, um, we go to the Atlanta Open. I'm so excited. This lady couldn't have been nicer. She's like, come meet us. Matt and I go down. And Matt and I are tennis heads. I'm a oh. tennis freak. Yeah. So I couldn't be more excited. I'm nervous. Then she emails and goes, change of plan. How'd you like to meet and hang out with Francis Tiafo, Big foe. Now, Ooh. if you don't know, he's, like, he's one of the big American players. Okay, okay. And I got to see him in the semifinals of the 2022 U.S. Open against Alcaraz, the best sporting wow. event I've ever been to in my life. Oh, Tiafo, sure. And uh, so I'm like shitting my, my tits. I go, I can't wait. This is awesome. We go down there. We watch some tennis. We got sitting like the, the main VIP area mm. under the roof with fans in front of us. It's nice and cool. Beautiful view. We hang out, watch some great tennis from a great spot. We go and meet Francis Diapo. Couldn't be nicer. Hey, hey, T. I wrote down a bunch of questions. It's all going to be on my YouTube. I wrote down a bunch of questions, which was exciting. We were on the couch. Me and Matt, another player named Borna Korich. Hmm. Born to run. 
born a born again Christian, uh-huh. and uh, he was nice too. But he's Serbian, so he wasn't as Ugh. silly. I was like, "Who's your favorite comedian? Why isn't it me?" And he was like, "We don't really like comedy." Yeah, he's got a little Putin in him. And he was like, "I like uh, Ricky Gervais," and I was oh. like, "All right, that's fine." Well, he that isn't Novak Serbian. Uh. He is Serbian. This guy was Croatian, I think. Oh, even worse. Croatia and Serbia, that used to be Yugoslavia. Oh. I think they split off. Is that right? You go, girl. Something like that. You're saying no? Uh, That's going to break his computer. Oh, you don't know, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Give it a good Yugoslavia there, became half Serbia, half Croatia. <clears throat> Sorry, what was the question? I heard Croatia's beautiful. Yeah, me too. We but should I, go. Yeah, Croatia... Yugoslavia, Serbia, yeah, they put that all in there. Are they connected? Ghastly, ghastly. Uh, and then there's Bosnia. That's a different. Oh, oh, you don't want to go there. That was uh, that had some trouble there. I think. Yeah, yeah. That was a big thing in the '90s. Ooh, Bosnia is in the news. Bosnia, and then there's Bahrain. There's yes. all kinds of crazy and places. Darfur. That was something I pretended to know about. That was Giannis's show. <laughs> Barfur. That's for us right there. Oh, that was a real inside yeah. insider. I'm too dumb to spell Croatia. C R O. Type in Yugoslavia. T I. Well, all right, we'll figure a. this out. Maybe Slovakia, Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic. Yes, Czech. No, mate. Czechoslovakia became Czech Republic and Slovakia. There That's two countries. There we go. And then Yugoslavia, I think, is Serbia, Croatia. Okay. I'm pretty sure. And then Istanbul is now Turkey. No, Istanbul is a city in Turkey. Thank that you. That was Constantinople. Constantinople. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. All right, now we're back. Oh yeah. I think Jason might have a learning disability. Are you okay? And an eating disorder. <laughs> <laughs> um, reverse eating. Anyway, so we went down there, interviewed Francis Diafo. He couldn't have been cooler. Couldn't have been better. What a thrill! It was like a it was it was like a dream come true. You're sitting there with like an athlete that you've watched live wow. on TV a million times. He just came from Wimbledon for God's sakes. Wow, where's he from? He's from uh, I think Orlando originally. Ah, uh, he lives in DC now. I think he's a DC guy, but I think he trains out of Orlando. I'm not really sure. His okay. parents are African. Ooh. I forget which country though. I don't want to get it wrong. Zaire. Sierra Leone. I oh. Think. Oh, good director. Yeah, so um, he's a great guy. Couldn't have been nicer. It was super cool. I, I made him laugh a couple times. Then I got awkward because his girlfriend was there. Mm. And one of my questions, I said, you know, I'm doing comedy. I'm married. I'm a, I'm a good, loyal husband and father. But when I'm on stage, I'm noticing hot girls in the audience. I'm like, my God, look at those tits. Look at those feet. Look at those lips. Look at that cock. Pretty standard. And you just want to you wonder what it would be like to make love to all these women of while course. you're performing. That's what you do. And I go, so you're noticing the girls in the crowd? And he goes, uh, and I wasn't, I didn't realize the woman behind him was his girlfriend. And then he kind of did this. Uh, oh. No, I'm not thinking about that oh. at all. And I was like, oh, I blew it. And what she looked, doing? she was, I looked over, she was staring at me. She never said goodbye to me. I think oh. she hates me. I think I blew it. Oh, you went over the net. Yeah, I think that, I think she didn't like it. I think he didn't like it. I think he was like, are you crazy? You went out of bounds. Yeah, so uh, that was a big fault. My yeah. fault. Okay, Double well, fault. it's nice to know other people do those those little faux pas. Yeah, well, I thought it was a decent question. Yeah, it's clever. And the uh, Croatian guy was like, I don't know what you talk about. No. Like this. All right, well, I don't stop look at it. women. Yeah, you know what's funny is uh, that's how men are. It would, and I know we're called creeps and sickos and fuck-ups, but it's just how we're wired. We can't help it, you know? And it's, it's kind of a sense, uh, a type of body shaming. You know, when you go, hey, she was pretty hot, and they go, all right, you fucking deviant. You're like, I can't help it. That's who I am. That's how I'm wired. Right. But, like, I was in a bar with six guys. We're all hanging out, a bunch of comics. And the bartender was this fun, nice lady. She walked out, and I go, I would. And every guy went, yeah, nice tits. She had a pretty good ass. And we all clocked it. Hmm. So it's just a thing where she walked away for eight seconds, and... We'd have been talking for four minutes, and every guy knew exactly what they would do to her, what she looked like <laughs> naked, how her ass big, how big her tits were, the whole thing. I think women do this to some degree. I think if a woman walked in here right now, she's like, I might fuck him, I'd definitely fuck him, and I would never touch him. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think there is something to that. She would touch him on the way out, because you have to hit him physically just to leave. 
He's blocking the exit. Uh, we should have a camera on Cats because he's doing some great face takes over there. Oh, uh, yeah. Very sad, man. Wow, are you better than Chuck? Uh, oh, well, that's a low bar. Anyway, so what else is uh, what else is happening over there with your crazy <laughs> well, tits? I had to run this one by you, Fatty, uh, and I'll leave you alone. So I had to do... I don't know what's going on with my agent. They're booking me in these bumfuck, out of the way, small ass towns in the summer. Well, I mean, you they work for you. You're confirming the dates. That's true, but I don't look at things. They go, hey, we got you this, this, and this. And I go, ah. All right. So, but I should start checking because you might want to. <laughs> I'm in Rockford, Illinois this weekend and Rochester, Minnesota. Rockford Peaches. I think Rochester is where the mall is, right? Yeah, but so that's something. That's Rochester, New York, I think. No, isn't it the Mall of America in Rochester? Oh, maybe not. Maybe I made that up. No, I don't think so. What's in Rochester, Minnesota? I've heard of that. Maybe they have a minor league team or some shit. Something. I think it's. Uh, they used to be part of Yugoslavia, but um, <laughs> it's really. I think we've sold eight tickets. It seats four thousand people. It's not looking good. I'm getting all these DMs like, "Why are you coming here? What are you doing? No one lives there. It's a ghost town. It's just a hayseed." I think it's nice that you're doing service to these other people that don't get the shows. I think it's a nice gesture. I'm okay with the service, uh, service industry. Thanks for your service, but <clears throat> no one's coming out. Mm. So people, you get the four guys going, thank you for coming here, and you're like, well, this is a 1,200-seater. So I appreciate you four coming out, but uh, we can all do this from Dairy Queen. Right. So Whatever. Uh, but I go do Baton Rouge. Hey, Francois. Now, of course, the folks, they hit you up and they go, hey, Baton Rouge, an hour from New Orleans. Mm-hmm. How about this? You fly into New Orleans. We'll scoop you. And we'll all drive there together. Then we'll get dinner. Then we'll go to the show at your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, your grandma, your oh, your, your real dad are going to come out. And you go, oh, okay. <laughs> and then they go, well, then after the show, We'll all go out to Chuck E. Cheese, and then we'll go to a brothel, and then we'll drive you to the hotel, and we'll sleep over. I just picture you in the back seat, leaning forward in between your two parents. That's it. Yeah, your mother's sleeping, your dad's reading a book, and you're up there going, can we stop at Ice Cream Hut? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much, you nailed it. You throw a few action figures in there, and a Burger King crown. But, uh, I, you know you know how it is. The road is your escape, and now you're like, wait, now I'm eating dinner with my parents, I'm blowing my mom, and I'm... I'm Make it out with the cousin. I hate it. Yeah. Except that last part I like. Yeah, that wasn't bad. So uh, you're like, oh, okay, all right. So you talk to the parents. Flight delayed. Ooh, that's nice. So I'm on the horn with mom going, whoo, baby. Uh, it's a madhouse down here. The flight's delayed. Not, not looking good for the, uh, the pickup. Mm-hmm. So... I was going to fly into New Orleans, you know, you got to connect, whatever, fly to New Orleans, then drive with them for the hour. But I was like, things are so tight now, I got to just fly straight to Baton Rouge. I'll see you there. Okay. So that kind of bought me some some time. Get to Baton Rouge. All right. You get out of the plane, you get in an Uber, go to the hotel. Now they text you, how to go? What happened? You're like, well, I'm in an Uber on the way to the hotel. They're like, we'll meet you at the hotel. And you're like, I just want to... I just need a shower. Now, can you say to your parents, I need to shower? Yeah, no. <laughs> I should. I physically can, but I'm uh, I'm weak. Uh, and yeah, and I'm I don't want to hurt way, them. Believe me. Uh, yeah, I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to be like, I need some alone time. They're, you know, they're they're old and, and strange. Mm-hmm. So I go, all right. I'm just going gonna, gonna to get to the hotel. I'm going to do a quick shower. So I lie, as I do. And I go, oh, it looks like I'll be at the hotel at 6. I'm All getting right. there at 5.40. That'll give me 20 good minutes Okay. to check in, you know, drop the bags off, wipe my ass out, and uh, I shower. Wipe it out. <laughs> <laughs> wipe it out is funny. <laughs> yeah, I wiped it out because it was clogged. And I get in, I shower, I'm, I'm hustling, and uh, now it's, you know, 5.59. I run downstairs, my hair is wet. My parents are like, well, why are you all wet? I'm like, ah, it's sweaty. And we walk to the venue, we bump into the cousins, we see the cousins, we go in there, they're all in the green room, you want to look at your notes, you want to prepare. Finally, I give my, I give a, one of these to the uh, the tour manager. He goes, well, folks, looks like we got to get those seats filled, all right. He scoops them all out of there, he puts them right in the front row, they all have little hats that say Mark and a flag and a pennant. And uh, I had the worst show Come I've on. had in a while. I was off. I could see them. 
Uh, I went to Barcelona, too, so this is my first hour uh-huh. in, I don't know, two, three weeks. So you're kind of like, where am I? How do I open? What's my thing? Do I have any Baton Rouge stuff? Should I talk about my family? I was in my head, and then you're like, man, I'm super dirty. I'm talking about cleaning my ass out. I'm talking about eating ass. I'm talking about sex. So I, I was all over the road. Big bomb. Then I go back to the green room, covered in sweat. <sighs> That was tough. They all come in. They go, ah, that wasn't bad. What what happened there? You said that wrong. What does ghastly mean? It was all bad. And then I had to go dinner. I had to get dinner with the folks. That's the worst. And uh, uh, these parents, they fuck you. People don't realize that so much of comedy, you just want to be anonymous yes. in a weird way. Yes. You just want to be kind of out there doing your thing because it, it's work. It's work. You're at work. They, they think it's this big party. And they're like, well, where's the whore and the, 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 the coke and all this shit? And you're like, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> telling jokes, but I got to prepare. And they, they think it's a big party and then they come to the show and then they want to go out after and then... It, you need a little time. You need to. You got to save it all for the show. I think it's hard for people to realize that them, like loved ones, that it adds pressure, a layer of pressure. Of course, when they're there because you're thinking about them. They're like, are they comfortable? Right. What are they going to do after? Where are they going to park? They don't. My dad doesn't know how to drive. My mother gets nervous on in, on pavement. Yeah. Nighttime. Yeah. I get a little nervous on the weekends. You know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So it's. I mean, I told you, I shot my half hour in Boston. Oh, it was, I think about I, that. I would never do time. it again ever in my life. And and now I'm doing town hall at the end of the year. And Canner's wedding is the night before. <laughs> so my parents are like, "This is great. We can come to the show." And you, you have that thing of like, "How are they going to get to Midtown? Are they yes. going to figure this out?" Yes. And, but I'm learning through uh, years of therapy. Like you got that's they're adults. Yeah, you figure they it out. They figure that out. They they do that and. Um, but you want them to have a good time. But then there's little things where like I'm doing a hawk tour bit, mm-hmm. and I look down and my mom's like, "What's hawk tour? What the hell's hawk tour? Is that a Native American thing?" And I'm like, "Oh, this is brutal. They don't know what hawk tour is." And then I'm like, "Why am I talking about hawk tour?" I don't know. And then you have dinner, and they're like, my mom's like, so what's Hawk Tua? And I'm like, that's ah, about a girl who blew a guy. And she's like, he blew a guy? I'm like, well, he's on the man on the street. She's like, she blew the man on the street? I'm like, ah, Jesus. Well, at least they ask. At least they ask, and they go, what was up with that bit? That's my true. My parents have never asked about a bit, a shit, or a clit. Well, <laughs> I don't think my mom knows about a clit is either, but I do think... I don't think she cares about, like, what's your comedic process. I think she's like, what is this thing everybody's laughing at that I don't know about? Right. So it wasn't about me, but whatever. Uh, And then here's the the bad part is you do the dinner, you get the food. And my dad's one of these guys, too. He's, like, older, so he's gluten intolerant. He's vegan. He's uh, alcoholic. He's this, he's that. So he's like... Does the uh, does the beef barley have cream in it? And the guy's like, I don't think it has cream. He's like, Well, if it has cream, I'm ruined. You're gonna ruin my whole night. And the guy's like, I don't know about the cream. And uh, so you're like, Dad, just get the beef barley. We'll see what happens. I'll pay for it. Pick, picked up the check, which is a weird feeling with the parents. And then uh, they leave, and you have that like. Woo! I call the openers and we just drowned ourselves in vodka because you know you gotta like you gotta decompress after that. You really do, it, and it's it's strange. And this is my goal as a parent to not be the kind of parent that my kid is like, oh, yes, you know yes. you want to have because some people have relationships. They have that. They, they hug and they high five and they give each other noogies and they fist fight and they. They're just talking about their lives. Yes. It's like beautiful. How about these these kids who are not kids, but these children of parents? So they go, Mom, I'm having a rough day. This happened. And mom's like, oh, tell me about it. I would never have a rough day and call my parents. No. In fact, yesterday, I mean, I don't want to get too personal here, but uh, yesterday I was on the phone with my mom. I hadn't talked to her in a while, and I was telling her about the date, the Foo Fighters. I was like, well, we went on a date. We had a day. And she goes, All of a sudden, there's no reaction. She goes, hold on, Please. And she's leave in the middle of the story. Oh, wow. She goes, sorry, sorry. Somebody was calling me. Anyways, so yeah, we got to go to the thing. Never uh, ask for the rest of the story. Yeah, that's a bummer. It's devastating. Yeah, it hurts. You're just like, all right, well, fuck that. I guess, fuck me. You feel like you're bombing. Yeah. I mean, I told you, I went to the, the Louis tour. I went to 17 countries on a private jet, came home, called my mother. The phone call was 90 seconds long. Wow. I was like, all right. They, they still don't know what, uh, what what Paris looks like. Wow. It's crazy. But See, what are you going to do? 
mine is similar but different. It's uh, hey, I went to seventeen countries, and they're like, he pays for all that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's, he's the headliner, and they're like, do you pay him back? I mean, that feels like he's he's spending a lot of money on you, and you're like, well, he picked me to to open, huh? He picked me, and they're like, well. That's thousands of dollars. I'm right. Like, yeah, all right, I'll see you later. Yeah, this is this really something. went a different way. Yeah, I hope that uh, you know I do better. Yeah, we'll see. Did your agent book that? No, he picked me. So what does your agent do then? Uh, they book me on other stuff. Not as good as that though. All right, I'll see you all in hell. See, I'm jealous of that though. Wow. Well, that's a question. You're getting questions for but God's the questions, sake. That's something. The questions turn the knife. They right. they somehow make you feel worse. Right. I'm getting silencio. It's like yeah, they're mad no at me. Good. I'm like, all right. Well, every every story I tell, I bring up. I'm like, right. check this out. Right. And they're like, eh, tell it to the audience. And I'm like, all right. Well, whatever. That's that's fascinating because yeah, we're 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 both getting fucked in the ass, but in different. Different dicks. Different holes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you're getting no questions. I'm getting questions that will lead to pain. Uh, you're getting just pain. Yeah, I'm getting... I'm out. <laughs> I remember when I told my mom about the Emmy win, and she was like, but you still don't have health insurance. Nah. You want an Emmy? <laughs> yeah, a while ago. Way to slide that in How there, Fanny. No, I was saying because it was whatever. It was. A, I know. Did I win an Emmy? And she was like... And you won that silver award that we got. Oh, yeah, yeah. But she, she, I telly. remember, and she was uh, like, well, you don't have health insurance, whatever. And I was like, what? Oh, I forget. Yeah, I got an Emmy. Like, Nothing's good enough. I know. Man, health insurance is a fucking rook. Yeah. I never have. I don't have it. Still it's don't have it. Bullshit. Might want to get it for the baby. But nah. those babies are expensive. He's those collars are funny. What's All right, up? where are you going to be there, Dick? What are you this, showing us? This is Rockfield, uh, Rockfield Illinois. Oh, um, it looks wow. awesome. Look at this. That wow. looks spectacular. Put about three stick figures in the front row, and that'll be what we're dealing with. Oh, that's going to be great. They'll drive down from Chicago or whatever. Um, all right, well, the big one, November 9th. I'm going to be plugging the fuck out of this. Town Hall. Woo! We sold a few hundred tickets the first day, hey. which is nice. That's exciting. But now we got to sell several hundred more. Well, what is it, 11, hun? 14. Whee! 1400 in the middle of a festival. Yay. So it's a it's a it's a big it's a tall order Normberg. Yeah. Um, Mark Normberg. Uh, November 9th Town Hall, New York City. When does this episode come out? August 5th. It looks like. Uh, what do I have? I have side splitters coming up very soon. Hey, tampon. Hold on, Florida. Tampa. I can't wait for that. Holy shit. Great club. Holy shit, where's the Tylenol? Uh, I got Luke Monas with me down at Side Splitters. That's my fucking favorite place on earth. Good That's, club. Uh, oh, Magoobies this weekend. I don't want to forget that. Magoobies in Timonium, Maryland this weekend. Tampa Side Splitters, August 22nd through the 24th. And then September, I'm going insane. It's Oklahoma City, Whoa. the 5th through the 7th. Portland Helium, the 12th through the 14th. Whoa! Indianapolis Helium, the 19th through the 21st. Skank Fest, of course. Ay, 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 and then ay, October, ay. Uh, Philly Helium. And then uh, 17th through the 18th, Royal Oak, Michigan. 24th through the 26th, Madison, Wisconsin. That's insane how much I'm on the road. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks in a row. Great clubs, too. The child. That's a fuck up. All right. Anyway, so, um, yeah, come out to those, please. Hey, hey, Richmond, Virginia, Carpenter Theater on the 9th, then a Carolina Theater in Greensboro, North Carolina, Anaheim, California, uh, Thousand Oaks. I think one of those is already sold out. Count Basie in Red Bank and. Reading, PA. Then we are going to Colorado Springs, Fort Collins, uh, opening for Jim Jeffries. I'm at the St. Louis Fox Theater, Orlando, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, and Portland, Oregon. I love Portland. Great crowd. So, yeah, that's just to name a few. Co in Portland? Uh, August, late August. Why? What are you thinking, Fanny? I'm there in September. Oh, wait, no, so am I. September 27th. Oh, I'm there. I'm in Portland. Friday. For that. Uh, go punch up live slash Mark Norman, punch up live slash Joe List, and uh, queef it up. Get on the Patreon. I'm about to do a bonus right now. Some big news dropped on the bonus that, uh, you know, if you get on the Patreon, you can see stuff early. And yeah, get, you get the, the news uh, early. The inside scoop, yeah. The so. big news. Yes, big salad. So thank you, folks. We'll see you in hell. Uh, JJ, you want to po poke anything? This guy's got every special there is. Uh, 
What oh, special okay. haven't you directed? Well, no, I don't have any. All right, great, even better. God bless you. Butt plug. Thank you, folks. Praise Allah. Keep it up. Okay.